May 15. Numbers 24. Psalms 66 and 67. Isaiah 14. 1 Peter 2. In an age of many praise choruses, people are tempted to think that our generation is especially rich in praise. Surely we know more about praise than our stuffy parents and grandparents in their somber suits and staid services, busily singing their old-fashioned hymns. It does not help clarity of thought on these matters to evaluate in stereotypes. Despite the suspicions of some older people, not all contemporary expressions of praise are frivolous and shallow. Despite the suspicions of some young people, not all forms of praise from an earlier generation are to be abandoned in favor of the immediate and the contemporary. But there are two elements expressed in the praise of Psalm 66 that are almost never heard today, and that badly need to be reincorporated both into our praise and into our thinking. The first is found in verses 8 through 12. There the psalmist begins by inviting the peoples of the world to listen in on the people of God as they praise Him, because He has preserved our lives and kept our feet from slipping. Then the psalmist directly addresses God and mentions the context in which the Lord God preserved them. For you, O God, tested us. You refined us like silver. You brought us into prison and laid burdens on our backs. You let men ride over our heads. We went through fire and water, but you brought us to a place of abundance. Verses 10 through 12. This is stunning. The psalmist thanks God for testing his covenant people, for refining them under the pressure of some extraordinarily difficult circumstances, and for sustaining them through that experience. This is the response of perceptive, godly faith. It's not heard on the lips of those who thank God only when they escape trial or are feeling happy. The second connects the psalmist's desperate cry with righteousness. I cried out to him with my mouth. His praise was on my tongue. If I had cherished sin in my heart, the Lord would not have listened. But God has surely listened and heard my voice in prayer. Verses 17-19 through 19. This is not to say that the Lord answers us because we have merited His favor by our righteous endeavor. Rather, because we have entered into a personal and covenantal relationship with God, we owe Him our allegiance, our faith, our obedience. If instead we nurture sin in our inmost being, and then turn to God for help, why should He not respond with the judgment and chastisement that we urgently deserve? He may turn away and sovereignly let sin take its ugly course. Our generation desperately needs to connect praise with righteousness, worship with obedience, and the Lord's response with a clean heart.